Uh, good afternoon, and uh, thank you very much for asking me to uh, speak today. And it's very nice to see uh, lots of familiar faces and also to see uh, new folks. Um, an important part of the understanding Prada Willi syndrome is the oxytocin issue, which we've been involved in investigating for a number of years now. Um, so what's this about? Um, well, oxytocin is produced in the hypothalamus, which is this part of the brain, um, at, at the base of the brain. And um, the hypothalamus is the part of the brain that uh, controls uh, a number of important functions. So uh, it controls hunger and thirst, uh, sleep and fatigue, sexual development, body temperature, and uh, pr production of growth hormone. And of course, you will recognize that uh, folks with Prader-Willi syndrome have problems in all these functions. And um, oxytocin, uh, you may know, is uh, involved in making the uterus contract. So uh, oxytocin under the brand name of syntocin is given in, in, um, in, in a drip form to women in labor to encourage uh, the progress of labor. And it's also, oxytocin is also involved in um, stimulating milk production for newborns. But oxytocin is also involved in social behavior. So it's the release of oxytocin at the time of uh, delivery, which stimulates the bonding between mother and, and infant. Um, in fact, another feature of Prader-Willi syndrome is that uh, you know there are often uh, a lot of problems in, in uh, labor and in late pregnancy. And um, it's actually, it, normally it's the oxytocin produced by the baby's brain that uh, tells the mother's uh, brain that it's time to initiate to labor and to start, start <coughs> contractions. And it's the lack of oxytocin coming out of the baby's brain when the, the baby has PWS that leads to all those obstetric complications. And oxytocin is also involved in reactivity to stress. Now there's another hormone that's relevant called vasopressin, which um, is very similar to, to oxytocin. And um, it's just got two extra, uh, amino, two different amino acids. And uh, vasopressin has different effects. It's involved with, uh, in, in, with managing the amount of water the body retains and uh, blood pressure and temp also temperature. Um, and whereas oxytocin, uh, it tends to be a calming hormone, uh, vasopressin is a stimulating uh, kind of hormone which, which is produced when there's, a f when there's some kind of threat to an animal um, and produces the fight or stimulates the fight and flight response. Um, so this is a little technical, but just t to tell you some of the evidence for why w uh, the relationship between oxytocin deficiency and Prader-Willi syndrome. Firstly, um, when the brain of people with Prader-Willi syndrome who've, who've died uh, was uh, examined, and this all work done in the Netherlands, um, and uh, it was found that the major, the major finding was that the particular part of the hypothalamus that produces the oxytocin was small and the, number and the particular cells that make oxytocin were deficient. And um, there are a couple of mice that have had their genes uh, modified and, and the, their particular genes which are in the Prader-Willi critical region uh, and they also have uh, diminution of oxytocin. Now also people who, humans, who suffer damage to the hypothalamus, the part that's producing the, the oxytocin, uh, it could be damage from uh, cancer or trauma. Commonly, uh, there's a particular kind of tumor which children get called a craniopharyngioma, which affects that part of the brain. And sometimes when the, when the tumor is removed, it damages the hypothalamus. So they don't have Prader-Willi syndrome, but they, 
that same bit is damaged and those children and those people also develop uh, hyperphagia, intense hunger, and they also have the rages that are such a big problem in prader willi syndrome. So uh, taking all that together uh, suggests that, that uh, a deficiency in oxytocin is, is important in what we see in people with prader willi syndrome. So, uh, so that led us to uh, ask the question, well, what, hap what would happen if you administered oxytocin hormone to people with prader willi syndrome? And you can give, uh, you know, in, in labour, of course, it's given intravenously, you know, into the vein, but we don't want to be doing that, but you can give it as a nasal spray and it's absorbed through the mucus of the nose and gets into the brain. So we thought that we would do this and uh, it's been done for other conditions like autism and we would see if it worked and what effect it had. So um, there were 30 young people with PWS aged 12 to 30 and it was a randomised double blind crossover design. So all, what that means is that um, half the group got the, pro got the oxytocin uh, for um, eight weeks and at the same time the other half got the uh, placebo, the nasal spray which didn't have any oxytocin in it and neither the um, families nor the researchers knew which was which at that stage of the study and we measured, uh, we measured behaviour, uh, measured weight, appetite, obsessionality and um, capacity to understand others' emotions. And then after eight weeks, um, we swapped over. So those who'd had the um, placebo got the oxytocin, those who got the oxytocin had the placebo. Again, n none of us knew which was which at that point. So then after the study was completed, uh, we so-called broke the blind, that's to say uh, found out who had received, after the measurements had all been taken, who'd, who'd been in the first group to get the oxytocin, who'd been in the second group. Um, and most disappointingly, um, there was no improvement in the folks who received the oxytocin. Uh, in fact, uh, when we used two, we used two different doses, and at the higher doses, the, the, the tantrums got worse. Um, so, I mean, this was uh, very disappointing, not just for us as researchers, but for the families who participated, and, and the prader willi Syndrome Association uh, had contributed funding to it, the, uh, Pro the US prader willi Foundation and the National Health and Medical Research Council. But, you know, this is the way uh, science goes. What what seems to be theoretically a good idea, you've got to try it out. You've got to try it out in the right way, in this rigorous kind of a way to find out if it really works. So then that leads us to the question, well, if, if ox prader willi syndrome is an oxytocin deficiency disorder and you give people oxytocin and it doesn't work, well, why not? So that leads us to say, well, it, it, the message it gave us is, well, we've got to learn more about what's going on. Obviously, what we understood is too simplistic. So the second, so one possibility is that, um, you know, when you give a drug and it works, it's like fitting a lock into a key, and 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 the lock, you know, the key is the drug, but the lock is the is the receptor. So it the the drug has to fit exactly into the lock before you know it'll open the door. So the question was, well. You know, if Prader Willi syndrome folks are deficient in the way they make oxytocin, maybe they're deficient in their receptors in some way as well. So, um, so that was one possibility. The other possible, and then the explanation for the other bit at the higher doses is that at the higher doses, the vaso, the oxytocin may have been binding to the vasopressin receptors. That's this very similar one. So it's a very similar kind of a lock. So it fitted in there, but that's the lock that switches on the fight and flight kind of behaviour, which is <coughs> like the tantrums. And then there's another possibility which we did not fully understand at that time, and that is that the oxytocin is actually made in two different forms, uh, one which is a bit longer and one which is a bit shorter. And the one which works normally 
Well, so, it's, so the, the, <coughs> the brain first produces the long one and then it chops off a bit at the end to make the short one. And the, bit at, and the, the short one is the one which is active and which is the one that works. And um, we're not sure whether folks with PWS have got a problem in, in this chopping off uh, function. Now, I just want to go take an aside for the moment, um, and that's to tell you about uh, the vagus nerve and oxytocin, because uh, so vagal nerve stimulation, the, the vagus is a nerve which goes uh, from the brain down and, and innervates the stomach, connects to the stomach and, uh, and other internal organs. Um, and a vagal nerve, you can stimulate this nerve it, and it, it can be used as a treatment for severe epilepsy. And um, there's some evidence to suggest that it might affect weight loss. So Tony Holland, who was going to come to the meeting and unfortunately couldn't, uh, piloted vagal nerve stimulation in three people with PWS to reduce their appetite. And it, he found that it made no difference to their appetite. But to his great surprise, uh, the people had fewer behaviour problems. They were a lot calmer. And in fact, when he, when the trial was over, the, the people with Prader-Willi syndrome, this is interesting, the people with Prader-Willi syndrome themselves said they didn't want the thing they didn't want the vagal nerve stimulation to stop, and and uh, as as did their families. Um, now, um, why why might this be connected? Well, the polyvagal theory is provides us with some explanation, and it it uh, the evidence for this suggests that uh, the vagus is involved in. Uh, if you think of if you think of primitive animals, um, you know they they have to be ready to um, protect themselves from predators. So they have to very quickly develop a state of high alertness. But if you're in that high state of alertness, that's not the same a state as what you need to be in when you're grazing or feeding, or when you're you know uh, forming an intimate relationship and and um, and mating. And the vagus is switches us between these in the right kind of a way, uh, but if if it's not working properly, and, and provides this, if it's not working properly, it can put people in this fight or flight mode too easily. And you could you can see the analogy with PWS because you know the folks with PWS will very rapidly kind of uh, firstly perceive threat when it's not really there, but misperceive it and then react in this very kind of uh, enraged way. And, uh, and oxytocin interacts with the vagus nerve in this way. So um, we've moved on now to the hypothesis that um, this, this is the bottom line here, the social and adaptive uh, deficits we see in PWS come from a combination of, of oxytocin deficiency or, or uh, oxytocin dysfunction and the dysregulation of this vagal system. So um, the bottom line, we are now undertaking a new uh, project that we've applied for funding for, which is going to really uh, test how, how these things are working in Prader-Willi syndrome and uh, to see whether um, modifying oxytocin delivery or modifying this vagal function can be helpful. Uh, I, I guess I should just point out to you that this, the problem with the vagal nerve stimulation as it is at the moment is the, the vagal nerve stimulator is an actual device which has to be surgically implanted. So it's not a trivial kind of intervention. Um, so I hope that gives you some insight into those issues. Thank you very much.